Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I invite you to please rise as you are able for our Thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rain to our thirsting earth, like streams that we revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Call us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Thank you. 
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. So everyone knows how to play Simon Says, right? Are you ready? Simon Says, raise your right hand. Simon Says, raise your left hand. Hands down. And I caught a couple people. <laughs> Many of us have played Simon Says or follow the leader at one point in our lives. We carefully listen to the command of Simon and move only when we're told to do so, or else we're out of the game. We take turns telling others to hop or skip or move around at our command. We enjoy the temporary power that comes with being the leader. But we always knew that these leadership roles didn't really come with power. They were just part of the game. Leadership held no risk as we played these games. There was no real plan for those who followed us around other than to have an afternoon of fun and maybe some good laughs. As we grew, we came to understand that being a leader comes with much responsibility. It has real risks and demands awful attention. It's not a role to be taken lightly. Others depend on our ability to lead and danger may lie ahead for those who lead their followers astray. Our gospel and psalm today both have the same theme, that of a shepherd caring for their sheep. God in the psalm and Jesus in the gospel are our shepherds. Now a shepherd's job was not easy. It's dirty, smelly, sometimes boring, and almost always there was a fair amount of risk. Sheep were easily startled and frequently wandered off, and they became easy targets for wolves and foxes. A shepherd had to know his sheep and which ones were more prone to distraction. He had to know the terrain and keep the sheep safe from harm. The shepherd was leader, friend, and protector all at once. The sheep looked to the shepherd for guidance and trusted them with their lives. They followed where the shepherd led them, or they could die. Jesus is well aware of this image of God as shepherd and us as sheep that was used throughout the Hebrew scriptures. That's why he frequently used it in his teachings. He knew the people he was talking to would be familiar with this metaphor and would be able to see Jesus in this role. Except Jesus extends the shepherd role as not just caring for his own flock, but for all of the flock, for all of God's people. He reassured them that even if they didn't know his voice yet, they would come to know it. All they had to do was listen and trust that he was leading them on the correct path. A wonderfully pastoral image of Jesus seeking a relationship with all who hear his voice. He knew people were in need of a good leader, someone to guide them, assure them, and lead them to safety. They needed a strong, steady, reliable voice to follow. 
There were many voices that challenged Jesus' teachings. Voices that challenged and dismissed him as the Messiah. Too many voices that competed for the attention of Jesus' listeners. It was just as true then as it is today. Think about how many voices compete to get our attention. The TV, radio, and newspapers offer their opinion on what is happening in the world and try to get us to share their views. They twist on how we should behave and seek relationships. Reality shows give a peek into the lives of others. And if we're not careful, we might think that we should model this behavior. And then there's the internet. Limitless voices that ask us to follow them. We're inundated by requests for our time and our attention. And sadly, poor role models are everywhere. It's sometimes hard to tell fact from fiction, reality from make-believe. The voices that demand our attention are louder sometimes than the voices of reason. It's almost as if these voices pursue us, make us feel as if we are lacking in some way if we don't follow their advice or buy their thoughts. They track us down in their attempts to monopolize our attention. It takes discipline and resolve to block out the distractions that come our way each and every day. This is what makes this message today from Jesus all the more important to hear. We read our gospel and our psalm for today through the lens of Easter. We hear Jesus inviting us all, an open and inclusive us, to hear the voice that gathers us together at God's table in grace and mercy given to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Christ our good shepherd, who promises us that we will have abundant life, and then backs up his promise by laying down his very life for us. This is the voice that calls to us and asks us to block out all the other voices that distract us. Jesus, the shepherd, who shows us that following him is enough. It is all we will ever need. The psalmist declares the Lord as the one who will watch over us, leading, comforting, caring for, and protecting the flock. We are told to trust that the Lord will guide us lovingly into safe harbor, green pasture, beside still waters. That even if we wander off the path, experiencing troubled times, God is present to assure us and put us back on the course to safety. These words are certainly comforting to us when we're dealing with a profound loss of grief, when we're alone or afraid. But what if just instead of looking at this psalm when we're troubled, we looked at it for guidance on how to live our life every day? Would that make a difference? Instead of searching for a leader, someone to listen to when times are tough, we would know that we already have one. That we have always had one. A strong, reliable voice to guide our lives. Jesus, the real alternative we have been given to all the distracting voices in the world. Simon says, follow Jesus. Amen.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that the cities and towns, countryside and wilderness, may abound with love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Hope giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the Lord. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Abiding Shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your Spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need, especially our sick. Stephen, Mike, Bruce, John, Erna, Christina, Jackie, Steve, Teresa, Aaron, Philip, George, Mary, Charlie, Betty, Ralph, Phoebe, Jimmy, Lynn, Ken, Mike, Judy, and those we name silently or aloud. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. 
in the midst of challenges and opportunities. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection, hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you, especially the evangelist Mark. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace. Join me as we examine our stewardship for the week. Marks of faith or worship, prayer, service, scripture reading, generosity, and mentoring someone in the faith. Please rise if you're able for offering prayer. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we sing, bind us together, please take out either bread you brought from home or the uh, pre-packed chalice. If you didn't get one, uh, put your hand up and someone will bring one to you. Father, endless is your mercy, and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people of every age, the promise to Israel, 
the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, at his supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Gathered into one, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites you to the table. Come eat and be satisfied. Let us find well spring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us. And send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May be seated to the announcement. So again, please join us for coffee hour at 11.30. Uh, the Zoom invite is here. Um, we also have Bible study Wednesday at 1 p.m. with our brothers and sisters at King of Kings and Gloria Day. That information is here. We are working our way through the Book of Ruth, if you'd like to join us. Uh, if you see out in the North Ex, there are some bright red seats. Pentecost is coming. It is on May 23rd. Um, so if you would like to purchase a plant uh, in memory or in honor of someone or to celebrate someone's birthday or anniversary or something, please uh, take one of these, fill it out, and return it with your payments and this filled out uh, by, what's the deadline? May 10th. 
uh, so that we may order some beautiful geraniums here. It will be Confirmation Sunday as well, so we will be able to celebrate uh, four young men who have been in the program for two years and will make their affirmation of baptism on that day. Uh, so if you would like to uh, do that, take one of these seats. We also uh, invite you any week uh, to um, offer gifts towards flowers. And again, those can be made in celebration of someone's anniversary, birthday, something, accomplishment, graduation, or in memory or in honor of someone. And again, uh, just please get that information to Jerry in the office so we can list that in our uh, bulletin. We have our animal lover uh, collection going on. So if you are an animal lover or no animal lovers, uh, we invite you to, next time you're shopping, pick up some dog food or cat food or gerbil food or whatever your favorite animal is and bring it in. There's a basket uh, next to the door. On May 16th, our confirmation students as a project will be assembling a little goodie bag to bring over to Helping Hands. Uh, we are very good at this congregation as a whole with um, supplying them with food and meat and all kinds of things for humans, but often our animal friends get forgotten and they sometimes go hungry as well. So uh, they were much appreciative that there might be some food for our animal friends. So uh, if you can help us out with that, we would appreciate it. Um, here's a blood drive at uh, Gloria Day. And I know Paul wanted to say something about council and volunteers and just things in general, right? Good morning. Did you know that you have a service today? That the word service was serving was used in the mission setting of the world. It was in the offering prayer, it was in the stewardship moment, it was a central thing for a church of God. Thank you, Paul. And our council president, Sandy, would like to come and say a few words as well. Good morning, everyone. Okay, this is all about you being able to hear me well. So, if you cannot hear me, please raise your hand, or you're not understanding if it's garbling. Please let me know. Raise your hand. Last week, we had um, Pastor Chris from Synod here with Pastor Rebecca. Uh, talking about the collaboration that we're about to embark on. During that conversation, uh, some questions were raised about the transition team, and then combined with our audio-video troubles and the Zoom not being able to understand 
the feedback I got this week is that people were confused. They couldn't understand what was being said. And so I am here to clarify all that, to be on the videotape. So whoever is not in the building now who prefer to watch the YouTube um, video can hear what I said, okay? It's very important to me as the president and as a human being to understand what is going on. So I'm going to take you back to 2019 and bear with me, picture it, Huntington Station, 2019, Pastor Frank Nelson announces he's retiring. Okay, so everybody in St. Peter's knows, well, that's going to mean we're going to need to call a new pastor. So we get an interim pastor, Pastor Rebecca. She organizes the next logical step, which is the transition team, a group of your fellow um, St. Peterites uh, go on the team, and they start preparing for us to be able to call the new pastor. So over the course of the last year, they have met, they have worked, they've done various projects. I was not on that team. Um, I was kept surprised of the things they were working on. They will be reporting out at our congregation meeting on June 6th, 6th June 6th, of what they've accomplished. But they have done surveys, they've done a bunch of other stuff, but the surveys that they did were very enlightening and very important because the data garnered from those surveys showed that a lot of people here at St. Peter's are ready to maybe look at some combined ministries with our sister churches, specifically with Gloria Day at this time because they are just a couple blocks. And we had already started doing some of that very successfully. The, the Advent services, the Lincoln services, uh, Bible study, confirmation classes. Um, so the process had begun anyway. So we said, well, why not? Let's see what we can further do that would be joint efforts, but with the goal of strengthening us. Okay, both our churches have seen a, a lack of, um, well, not a lack, but a decline in membership, people attending services, givings, as Paul pointed out, stewardship of your time and talent. You know, you've got the same 10 people running around doing the same job. It's hard, believe me. So, Pastor Rebecca and Pastor Branch from Gloria Day talked about this a little bit and decided to consult with the Synod about what options were out there for us to try, you know, that would strengthen our churches, make us more viable in the community, and perhaps work together in some respects. And then in the background, there is King of Kings over in Melville that we know is suffering, okay? They have a very small uh, congregation. They're just hanging on. They have not had a pastor in I don't know how many years now. Um, so the thought was, we are Christians. Let's reach out to our fellow Christians to see if maybe we can help them and they can help us somehow. So Synod came up with this idea that they've tried before in other areas or has been tried in other areas of a collaboration consultant. And what that means is that we would contract with a person who is expert or has the expertise in doing these collaborations. And what it has come down to is this. We thought it might be a good idea to try this because what we're doing all these years now is not working. Okay, we're, we're, we're losing people. You know, and yes, the pandemic has hurt us. There's no, there's no getting around that. 
but we need to come back from that. So how do we do it? You know, how do we get back from the pandemic? And that's just that's all the church. But before the pandemic, the situation wasn't much better. We just had maybe more people in the seats, but financially and, and um, volunteer-wise and everything, we were we were losing ground. So we decided we'd like to try this, and what it has come down to. We have this like now the transition team who did all this work. They're done. They have like one more meeting to wrap it up. They'll report out. In comes now the collaboration team, which we may rename just to keep things clear. I don't know. Um, so what's going to happen is these three churches and the synod have agreed to con- contract with this um, consultant. And there will be representatives from each congregation, St. Peter's, Gloria Day, and King of Kings, along with Pastor Rebecca, the interim pastor that will be assigned to Gloria Day, which is happening, is coming, and the consultant, and then Pastor Chris, who was here last week from Synod, okay? Because Synod wants this to work, and they have agreed to split the cost of the consultant with the three churches. They want it to work because they want the churches to survive. We need to become vital to this community. Um, I don't know what that looks like. Nobody knows what this collaboration is going to look like. We are going to have representatives from each church start to talk. What can we do together that will be stronger and better and reach more people? What um, are we already doing that could be improved? There's so much to talk about, and there's so much to listen for because the whole premise is the premise of this is to listen for what God is telling us to do or pointing us to do. You know, He doesn't. He never really makes you do it. He gives us the ideas. We don't really have another choice either. I mean, we could just simply go and call a new pastor. We're ready to do that, form a call committee and and do that. But that's doing things the way we've always done them. And I think we need to break out of that at this point and try something new. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not a big deal, nothing lost, because we are at the point where we say, okay, this collaboration thing is not for us, thank you very much, and we form a call committee, and we move on. So there's nothing for us to lose and everything for us to gain. So the bottom line is the transition team did all their work to get us ready to call a pastor. They're done, okay? We're not going to call a pastor right now because we're going to try this collaboration first to see if we can make ourselves a healthy, thriving church in conjunction with our, our sister churches because that's what we need. We need a healthy, thriving church that we can call a pastor to and not have the same struggles. Because, you know, in my experience, too, once you call a new pastor, you have people who are dissatisfied with that, and and, and we're just going to lose more if we just simply jump to that to that piece. Now, the good part of this was that Pastor Rebecca signed a contract with us for two years as our interim pastor, which technically expires in October of this year. But she has agreed to extend her contract with us and stay with us as a guiding, consistent pastoral guidance, you know, guidance until this is done. You know, what, however it turns out, we, we form some sort of collaboration or we go through the call process and call a pastor. That's hugely important that we have this, this same guiding hand. 
So I think that's what I wanted to communicate. I hope I communicated it clearly. The transition team has done their work, and we thank them for that. They work very hard. They will report out to us at the June meeting of everything that they've done and put into place and, 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 de and de determined. And at that point, the collaboration team will begin, hopefully, will be able, you know, ready to begin the process of talking with the other churches, the consultants, and Synod about how we can strengthen the good things that we do here. Now, one of the things that was mentioned, and, you know, I've already had two meetings about this collaboration, and there they talked about a person in, I think it was Texas, where they did this already. There was three or four small congregations located near each other in Texas, and they were all, you know, going downhill. So this consultant came in, and they successfully created some sort of collaboration, I don't know what they do, by still retaining their own church identity. So, you know, the collaboration doesn't mean that we're going to close the doors and say, you have to go to Gloria Day now, and, or vice versa. The collaboration's goal is to do joint ministries and, and get into the community while still retaining our identities as, as a church. That would be the ideal goal, and that's what we're hoping to do. So, as far as the consultant that did this in Texas, I think that she is going to be brought into the conversation at some point to give us information on what they did and how they did it, and just to give us some examples. Whether it's good for us or not, I don't know, but at least we have an idea of what has happened in, you know, in the past. I'm not going to lie either that this has not worked in the past, you know, it has not, it's not an easy process, you know, people are very, they love their churches, they love their identities, and, you know, you've got to get past some of that. I don't anticipate this is going to be easy. Now, lucky for me, Ted Graham and Barbara Harris have agreed to jump to the collaboration meeting with me from the transition team. So those two have a very good working knowledge of what the transition team found, what they've uncovered, and, and what they think this con you know, where they think this congregation wants to go. In addition, Doreen uh, Buckman, our deacon Doreen, has also agreed to be on this team with me. And, you know, we just need her insights all the time. She keeps us grounded in the, uh, in the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's good for us. So, anyway, I hope I have clarified this. If I have not, I expect people to ask me questions. Reach out to me on email. Reach out to me on the telephone. Stop me if you see me in Stop and Shop. You know, it's so important that people don't speculate and think what they think they heard. You know, we need everybody to hear the same thing and ask questions. There's contact information for us all the time. Available. And if you can't find a way to contact us, call the church office. Jerry will be more than happy to give you our information. So I think that's it. Did I cover everything? I got it. I got it, Paul. Yeah. Okay, I do hope to give you a happy update, though. Council is looking for your help. We would love for you to join Council. And Nancy Barker, you know, our Nancy Barker has volunteered to run for our secretary position. So we could get that good news for us. So we could still use a couple of more people who want to join in on this exciting time and watch me tear my hair out once a month. You know, that's, that's always fun. Okay, thank you very much for your time and your um, patience. And like I said, please ask what you don't understand or what you're wondering about. Anything, okay? That's much better than gossip in the parking lot. Thank you very much. Have a great day.
Okay, thank you, Sandy. Um, the other, I just want to add one thing is that rest assured that whatever the collaboration team finds out will be communicated to you. Part of our work is to work with you and get feedback all along the way. So it's not like these five people are going to go off and do something for a year and you'll have no idea what they're doing. It's going to be... Um, and it's going to be, you'll know what's going on every step of the way. So, so please rest assured that we will continually uh, give you information and that we will seek your, your feedback and that no decision can be made on anything as far as structure or whatever without you voting on it. So the only thing that's happening now is discovery, is talking, is finding out where God might be leading us. And once we get a clue as to where that might be, then you will be uh, part of that process to get wherever we go. And unfortunately, the hardest part of this whole thing is we don't know where that end is. And we're just going to have to trust God and trust in the process and just get there together. And I, as a person that likes control, this is not easy for me, but we have to kind of let go and trust that God will be leading us in a great place. So I hope that you can trust God as well. And again, please, any questions, talk to me, talk to Sandy, talk to anyone on council or on this committee. Because uh, we want everyone to be part of this process. That's okay. Communication is great. So, any other announcements? That was a lot. Okay. Thank you. Please rise as you are able. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thank you. 